Hello. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with Zoom. <laughs> it's like, I'm grateful for the technology, and then you're like, wait, yes. <laughs> I'm so over it. <laughs> I mean, I love you guys and everything. I just don't <laughs> want to see you this much. <laughs> she looked at me, and I had never been so red so fast in my life, because she said, Love the hair, love the dress, love the shoes, love everything. <laughs> hey. Hi. Hi, friend. Hey. How are you? Hi, my friend. Are you doing good? I'm doing super <laughs> well. So good to see your face again. Twice in like a week's time makes me so happy. <laughs> I know, my friend. Girl. Let me tell you something. Yes, twice in one week. We've been trying to do this for how long? I oh know. God. I'm so grateful. It's one of the good things of this season. Um, although I have a love hate relationship with Zoom. <laughs> It's like, I'm grateful for the technology, and then you're like, wait, yes. <laughs> I'm so over it. <laughs> no, for real, because I, I try to tell people, like, technology is not my thing. No. So I, I took a class in seminary called <laughs> Technology and Worship, and I still can't turn on the keyboard. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. I'm so serious. I yes, love you too. So many of us identify with that. So seriously, how are you? Like, how are you doing? I, you know, we talked about a pretty heavy subject. Yes. So I know, like, I, I, I know it's been a heavy time. But like, how do you feel like you're doing in this season? You know what I mean? Like, yes. so much. You know, honestly, I think that I have, it's like an emotional roller coaster. So yeah. some days are great. And as a, tw and you get this, as someone who lives their life on the road, especially I've been doing that for 21 years, where the majority yeah. of my life is on tour. And so um, it's funny how we were even joking as a band that remember how much we would like long for a Saturday at home? until yeah. every day became Saturday. <laughs> You're yeah. like, I hate Saturdays at home now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, let's just be long for it. <laughs> like, honestly, I have, I've been feeling that same kind of way. Like, I, I am a working mom and I love yeah. to be. Yeah. And I feel like I'm a better mom yeah. when I'm working. Yeah. So it's kind of like what I've been missing are the cues. Yes. That my kids get when I leave. Yes. Like the cues, like mommy's going to work and then when she comes happy. back, we're all happy. Yeah, I think for me too, it's it's a, such a study in human nature because Yes. Um for me, I realize and I think for most people, I want a break on my terms. So I want to be the one to say, I'm taking a break and I'm choosing this. I don't want somebody to tell me that I have to. <laughs> and no. that is such a part of our actual rebellious human nature where we Ooh. don't like to be told what, what to do. do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. And so we immediately like buck, want to buck the system. And I think yeah. that that's been a learning curve for me because some days it's glorious. Yeah. Like some days, I'm so grateful that I have this time with my kids. I mean, my twins yeah. are 13 now, which is hard to believe, but. Wait, 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 wait. I know. What? 13, they're actual teenagers. <laughs> I was gonna ask you about that, because I was like, okay, I was thinking that thing about their ages the other day, and I was like, for some reason, I feel like they're 13, like they just crossed into teens. And, but I, it can't be, because if that's the case, then it means some things about me. I know, literally, you guys were at like their second birthday, their first birthday, I don't remember what it was, but that's how fast a decade goes, you know what I mean? Way fast. And so that's been good in the sense that yeah. this time, yeah. we'll never probably have this again. 
until like they're gonna leave yeah. the house. You know what I mean? Like we'll probably never yeah. ever have this again. So that has been beautiful, and I yeah. also tell myself that on the days that it's not beautiful, like the days that we're all bored, like yes. even Sadie, my youngest, who's nine, yeah. she's like, I mean. I love you guys and everything. I just don't <laughs> want to see you this much. <laughs> what I'm saying, so Sadie is nine, but she's not. Like, so, she's not. She's like, she's 35. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, mm. Sadie oh, came oh, out. She's like, down. Break yeah, down. she came out grown. I remember I showed up <laughs> at a Dev Awards one time. And I walked up to say, hey, you and Bernie. And she was sitting there with you. And she looked at me. And I had never been so red so fast in my life because she said, love the hair, love the dress, love the shoes, love everything. <laughs> I said, love the I hair, just... love the dress, love the shoes, love everything. <laughs> That's so her. <laughs> like, it was so fast. Love the hair, love the dress, love the shoes, love everything. <laughs> That's so her. That is this so her. Girl oh my red God. In five seconds. Yeah. Broke it I don't even know what to do. Like I said, because what do you say when the little girl is not a little girl? I was like, thanks, girl. <laughs> I was like, I love her. And then y'all turned around and I was just stunned. Like, I oh, love this What kid. do I do with this? <laughs> exactly. It's awesome, though. So it's like, no, Sadie is nine. But Sadie. Yeah, she's, she's been grown her whole life. Yeah, she has. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, oh, my gosh. First of all, I can say your hair is looking bomb. Oh, um, girl, thank you. So that's the one thing. So I got hair in my mouth. I'm literally like, Lord. Go, so that's listen. the one. People are, in my life are always excited when there is going to be a Zoom call because I make my, yeah. like, I don't look presentable from the post. <laughs> like, I might tell oh. my slippers on and possibly yeah. not full pants. I'm but, barefoot with leggings. Don't get it twisted. Right, yeah, that's why I get it twisted. <laughs> but whenever I do this, Bernie's always like, oh, <laughs> this mama had a reason to do herself up today. <laughs> You looking great. I'm liking how it's cascading over there. I was like, yeah. Thank you. I know it needs a haircut, but I did finally get the color done. Thank you, Jesus. I know I'm like these people that are all about going natural. Yeah, I will cheer you on in that. I will cheer you on and fully support your decision, but you gotta support yeah. mine. And it was instant. The day, the day she opened, I was in the salon chair. You had been texting her threes before that. Now girl, when they open, you know, keep my spot. Girl, I'm not asking you to break the law. I'm not asking you to break the law, but I'm gonna need to know the minute it opens. <laughs> Cause I'm like, <laughs> I need to be first in line. I'm so sorry. Oh my word, listen. <laughs> I don't see actually anything wrong with that. Absolutely <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Like, how, oh my gosh, that's one way. I was just about to say, how are you taking care of yourself in this time? Because oh. self-care for a mom is super important. Because I've learned that the 24 hour a day thing has taught me I only have so much yeah. before I go ham. Yeah. And nobody really wants me to go ham. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. like, what are you doing in this season while you're at home? What are the ways, how are you taking care of yourself? You know? It's actually really hard. I think you know enough about my story to know, like I had postpartum depression after the birth of Sadie. I didn't struggle after the twins, yeah. but after Sadie, I had it for a good long while. And then I have learned through the years that once you're in the pit, <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna make sense to you, but it's actually easier to stay in the pit than it is to get yeah. out. That doesn't make any sense to someone who's not in the pit. But when you're in the pit, yeah. it it's actually, there is work. We don't have to do work for our salvation. Yeah. But you have to take a hold of the hands that God's extending to you. Yes. And you got to confront some stuff in your life. And that's yes. always hard. So yes. for me, this season has been a real danger zone of that mm. kind of thing that's natural for me to just kind of yes. go inward. Yep. things that are bad for me, which is not always bad. Sometimes that's really fun. It's just bad yes. when it turns into six weeks of it. Exactly. And then not wanting to exercise and wanting to stay in my bed and because you don't really have a reason to no. get And I think that that's the part. Um, yeah. I always say my kids are always teaching me, but yeah. Grace, uh, who's one of the twins, who's also been a full-grown adult literally since she was born, Yes. But she's so mature. Like she said, you know what, mom? I've started at night before I go to bed, I started making myself a to do list, even though the to do list might literally say brush your teeth. But yeah. she's like, but for me, it helps me to have a plan 
and it helps me to say, this is what you're going to do when you wake up, otherwise I'm lazy all day. And I was like, girl, why? <laughs> I'm so help us, <laughs> help us, Gracie, help us. <laughs> and so I literally have to say, okay, what are you going to do tomorrow? You got to get up. You got to read. So yeah. for me personally, a lot of times that's like leaving yeah. my house for a few minutes yeah. and not being able to do that. Yeah, I think was the part where it put me into a funk. Like, okay, well, what are yes. you going to do? So Bernie and I just started walking at night. We're like, okay, we can just walk. I think I really learned through yeah. the years that being a good mom actually means sometimes um, taking a break <laughs> from your from your kids. And even like, I'll shut the door. Yeah. And Janice, that's one yeah. of the parts that's been so hard is because my having this kind of work like where you're doing radio interviews or all this stuff from your home all the time my home has always been my sanctuary i don't work in my home i work outside of my home so having yeah. that time where you're like okay i'm closing the door to my bedroom where i usually always am like come in i don't need my privacy now i'm like i need my privacy and you have to yes. respect that and i have to have boundaries and you have to be okay with that because it's going to make me a better mom <laughs> I do. I know, that's I'm like you have to stay out for 15 minutes even I lock my door yeah. leave me alone <laughs> that's brilliant and I I was about to say I, I forgot about that because I yeah I struggled with postpartum depression with Gabriel so I know exactly what you mean about this pit that you can get into and then in my case I often start to deny that oh it's not coming I'm fine I'm fine and then I'm there I am in it and so you're right it's just setting on boundaries because there are no cues for them to take it's like I have to set this boundary and we'll be okay I think one day I just set everything down grabbed my keys and I was like I'll be back and I know they thought she's she's, she's done it <laughs> it's happening guys it's happening <laughs> right. this is not a drill she's literally going on the <laughs> right. and yeah. so you know but it really helped because I was like, I just need to drive for 15 minutes. Even if there's no destination, I need to be somewhere by myself where nobody's calling on me and I can listen to what I want to listen to yes. all the way up. Yes. <laughs> like I literally, like they were laughing at me in a, a meeting at my church the other day because I got behind the drum shield and I just sang it at the top of my lungs, which when you have a three and a half year old and a six month old, nobody wants to hear you do that at home. <laughs> like it changes the home vibe. <laughs> exactly, it's a totally different thing. And you're singing yep. songs for them instead of songs for your own, to feed your own soul. And so you're like whispering, Jesus loves me. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that nervous, like, <laughs> because I, I oftentimes think about that scripture to love others as you love yourself. And yeah. I, I don't know what it is about women where we've got this thing. Well, number one, it's a God-given thing. I say yes. you might be a mom or you might not. Um, yeah. You might be married or you might be single, but if you are a woman, you are the glue for somebody somewhere because yep. actually God put that into a woman to have the ability Absolutely. to hold things together. We can multitask better than a man, yeah. sorry, but we just can. And the, But that's yeah. actually a God-given gift to be able to hold it yeah. together. But then what happens is, somewhere along the line that becomes our identity where we actually hang our hat on the fact that look at all that i'm doing for others look at all that i'm holding together and sometimes it's this yeah. false humility if that makes sense where it's this like false thing of like yeah well i'm doing this and i'm helping this person and then i'm doing this yeah. and i hear so many women where it's like i go you're actually finding your identity in that and then yeah you understand that you actually can't love others properly because the reason that you're, if you're serving from a pure place, then sometimes yeah. it can get a little tainted because then all of a sudden you're serving to meet a need in your own self instead of loving others as you love yourself, which means yeah. you have to love yourself, which means you have to take care of yourself and you yeah. have to invest in yourself. And that yes. doesn't make you selfish, it actually makes you smart. And I used to think that makes me selfish. Like, oh my gosh, oh, yeah. like, taking care of myself, like putting okay. myself first in that way, that's like anti-God, that's like not godly, that's worldly. <laughs> and where do we get that idea? I don't know. I don't know. 
Where do it's we get that super idea? spiritual thing that we that's what I mean. It's like a false thing. Yeah. And we think I it mean, makes we, us extra spiritual. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird because it's like even with Mary and Martha, we see the Lord being like, Mar uh, Mary chose the right thing. She oh. sits at my feet. And yeah. it's, I tell you, I learned early on in this thing that if I don't get up and spend time with the Lord, it's oh. not a good day for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, trust me, all y'all want me to get up yep. and spend time with Jesus. Yep. All y'all. <laughs> 100%. It's actually funny because um, I... I don't usually study the Old Testament um, yeah. because I, that's like the angry God. <laughs> that's yeah. like the, you know what I mean? And it's, yeah, that's I, I, hate, I almost hate saying that because to have full, you have to have both. And you understand yes. that the Old Testament is actually yes. such a beautiful thread to Jesus. It's a constant yeah. feeling of, of Jesus coming. But I just love, yeah. the, unless it's the Psalms. Because yes. that's, you know the writers are emotional basket cases, and so it's so like right. in the same right. chapter, not even in this like book, but in the same yeah. chapter, it's why have you forsaken me? You're withholding your love. Yeah. You'll never again be compassionate to me. Yeah. And then a couple verses later, you are the great God who loves you. Yes. And they're like, wait, I see you and I feel you. Like I'm, I'm basically that person on a regular basis. But then I like to skip to Jesus because he's so full of grace and. Yeah so full of mercy and yeah. that you feel like you learn so much and so I oftentimes yeah. I skip the Old Testament because it's just arduous to get like a so like you have to get through it yes but on, one of the things I've studied on this quarantine time was um in Exodus and how Moses was you know there was a promise that they were going to get to the promised land and yes and I kind of even felt like some all of us right now feel like we're stuck and we're so desperate to get out yeah. to get to the other side or to get yeah. to something better or whatever it is that is our promised land yes. which is getting away from whatever this season is that we're in yeah and in exodus 33 it's funny because um i was just studying that in the last few weeks and yeah god basically showing the children of israel what their sin does that it separates them Ooh. from god and there's this actual part where god says i'm actually going to hold back my presence for me i'm going to I'm going to actually, it doesn't say he's not going to go with them, but when you actually study what it means, he's saying, yeah. I'm going to actually step back from you. And that was so terrifying to go, oh my gosh, what would it be like? Now, obviously we have yeah. the Holy Spirit and so Jesus yeah. is with us, but there is a difference between God's omnipresence, which is him being with us at all times yes. everywhere, and his manifest presence, mm. which is presence made known. Yes. And in this season, I've been like, God, I know you're always with me. I know you are. But yes. I just need you to make your presence known. No. I need to yeah. know your presence known. And in Exodus 33, he's saying, I'm going to still give you your, the promise. I'm still going to take you to the yeah. promised land, but yeah. I'm going to stand back from you. I'm going to actually withhold part of myself. And then Moses says, well, what good is the promised land? What good is getting there if you're not like... If you're not right here, what good is it without you? It's your yeah. presence that sets us apart from all of us on the earth. And then he says something. And so this is basically yeah. my prayer. It started in quarantine, but now yeah. the world's even further upside down. So I'm like, guys, 2020 is something. It, it's, it, he's, his, it? his prayer was, so God, show me your glorious presence. And that prayer for me has been, okay, in this quarantine season, show me your glorious presence. And now in this unrest and this unraveling of, uh, of an issue that's been going on forever, but that we've ignored, 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 ignored. If everybody would just say, show me your glorious presence, then all of a sudden, all of the right and the wrong, the opinions and the this and the yeah. that, because when you have experienced his presence made known, oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry just yeah. talking about it. When you experience his presence made known, it does change everything. Like it cha it turns everything upside down in the best possible yes. way. Everything you think you've known, all the things you thought were right, all of a sudden you're like, well, wait a second, in his presence, I understand fully who he is. And I think that's what's really missing. So it's missing in our churches. It's what's missing yeah. in our community. It's that, yes. that manifest presence of God. Not just this idea that he never leaves us and never forsakes us. Right. That's important. But then we just quote that all the time. Yes. 
with no understanding of his presence made no yeah does not change when he makes himself known to us and yeah so that's really been my prayer this whole time every day i wish up. <sighs> That is power. Presence, <laughs> show me your glorious presence, and then I know if you do, yes. I know where to go from here. I'm not gonna have to keep feeling like, oh gosh, I don't know what to say, and I don't know what to do, and yeah. I don't know where to go. You are gonna know. You are because when he shows you his glorious presence, you yep. know because he's made his yep. presence. You know. And it's so interesting how I mean, literally, his presence changes everything. It doesn't matter what's happening, how bad it is, if. He brings or shows his glorious presence. All is made well because he's God. And we so need that right now. Like I feel like just our nation is fractured. The world is fractured. The church seems to be fractured. And it's like, Lord, if we could get on that, like what I need is for you and Bernie to go ahead and write that song today. <laughs> I need to get on that. <laughs> Go in the basement, record it, and give it to us. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's the beauty of this season now. Actually, it's like, yeah. y'all write it. Go, yeah. in the basement, Go do it. Record Go it. Do it. <laughs> and give it to us. All we, all we need is a piano vocal anyway. Like, I'm so serious. You think I'm joking? I'm so oh. serious. <laughs> because, I mean, this season has its... <clears throat> It has its struggles, but it has its benefits. And for me, one of the benefits has, it's just been the, just go ahead, just do it. What's holding you back? Because in this season, if you let it hold you back, you let you, you let it hold you back from everything. You yes. know what I mean? Like yes. it is, it is either the reason to go ahead and do everything you need to do or to stop and kind yes. of get holed up in the house. You know what I'm saying? And so it's been one of those things where it's like, well, nothing is ideal. So who cares? Just yes. do it anyway. Um, and that's been one of the hugest, hugest lessons for me as a mom, as a working mom, what is like, I, I, you gave us a, a great spiritual lesson too, but what is a very practical thing that has just rocked your world that makes it so that things will never be the same again? Like this will never get in my way again because of this season. You know what I mean? You know, it's funny because um, I'd like to say that it'll never go back to normal. Mm. But the, the truth is, is that we always say that when we're in the thick of the battle. But just just like somebody who fights a war and then they yeah. get to it and it's over, little by little you get further removed and further removed and further removed. And I think that's actually one of the things that I feel like the Lord, listen, we all have our own type of, our own theology on this. Mm -hmm. So I, I will never say, because I actually don't have it fully figured out. I will yeah. never say that God causes this because that doesn't right. make sense to a loving God. But at the same time, I'll never say that he did it because yeah. I don't fully know the mind of God. And I have scriptures that say that he, he laid burdens on our backs. I, yes. I remember reading that scripture and I was going, well, what does that mean? He laid them. That's saying he did but, it. Why would he do that? <laughs> why, why would we make that be unloving? Because we learn more about the character of the God we serve in the in the valley than we ever do on the mountain. Yes. And so why would I not believe that, okay, maybe he didn't cause it, but allows it because yeah. that's how gracious he is for yeah. a nation that has actually claimed him that is so far from him. Mm -hmm. Like a nation that we're unlike any other nation in the world. We actually yes. define ourselves by this idea of Christianity and freedom. Yes. And yes. but this idea of one nation yes. under God. Yes. But this idea that it's like, okay, if you're gonna say it, then don't use him to See. twist it all up and make it this religious thing where it's like our republic and our this and our and our freedoms. And I think that for me, somebody said this to me early on, and this is what I think will never be the same about me. Yeah. Is that we've been a nation that's been so comfortable 
Mm. And so much. Yeah. And so even with the quarantine and churches closing down, you have to yeah. realize, okay, are we gonna freak out because a building is closed down, or is God actually giving us the opportunity to realize that the church has yeah. never shut down? Because yeah. we are the church. And we yeah. say that so often, now he's giving us the chance to prove it. Yeah. Now he's giving us the oh. chance to live it. Okay. So now are we a nation that that okay for one nation under God do we believe that all men are created equal do we actually believe that not because of the words we say but because of the life we live yes. is, is that a is that a harsh God that's allowing that or is that a loving God who's saying I'm yeah. giving you the opportunity to right this wrong yeah. and so somebody said this to me they said carrying a cross was always intended to be uncomfortable and that for me has been what I feel like, okay, I'm never gonna be the same from that. Yeah. I've been looking to have comfort mm. where in actuality, when it says to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me, carrying a cross was always intended to be uncomfortable, which means if you are super comfortable in your Christianity, yeah. you better take a look at what you're doing because yeah. It's always intended to be uncomfortable. We got to find a new way to do church. That's uncomfortable. Okay, yeah. well, something's probably going right. I got to speak up for something that feels really unjust, and people are going to misinterpret me, and they're going to they're going to not understand me, and they're going to yeah. say things about me that aren't true. Yeah. Okay. Well, carrying a cross was always intended to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to have my kids ask me some really tough questions, and I'm. Gonna think I always have to have the answers yeah. and I, it's okay to admit that I don't have the answer and it's not going to mean I'm a failure. Okay. Carrying a cross was always intended to be uncomfortable. And I think that for me yeah. is the one thing that when I start to get uncomfortable yeah. and when, I mean, when I start to get comfortable because yeah. Yeah. the truth is that's going to come. I hate saying that everyone's saying it's never going to go back. And I want to believe that with all of my yeah. heart, except for we have hundreds of years of history that proves otherwise, oh. not just about this moment we're in. I'm yes. talking about just in general, like God teaches yeah. us that the reason that he has to be our good shepherd is because we're sheep and we're dumb and we forget mm. and we start straying and we start straying yeah. and then the shepherd has to come and bring us back and it's like okay we're on fire this is so good and we're never gonna do that again and we learned our lesson and then we start straying and straying and the shepherd <laughs> comes in and he brings us back and so for me it's oh. that one thought okay if i'm comfortable i better take a quick look and say, yeah. what is it that's comfortable that needs to become uncomfortable? Yeah. And um, I think that's the thing for me that won't go back. No. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, I want to believe that we'll never go back on certain things. And I do believe, Janice, right. that there are some things happening that will forever mark this moment. You yes. Know? And for me, yeah. was even for my kids, like, you know, kind of going, what have I learned in this season as a mom well everyone's yeah. personality is different i right. am a, a fixer so that's my nature so i'm like i'm gonna make lemonade you give me a lemon i'm gonna make lemonade it's not gonna be even bitter for a second because i'm gonna say look at what good we can do from this that's yes. just my nature. and part of that is because i'm gonna like i don't want to have to to go into the hard stuff, I just want to yeah. be able to say, you know what, we can't do anything, so we're just going to move past it, we're going to make yeah. something out of it. Yeah. And one of the things that I learned early on in this quarantine is that was not working for all of my kids. <sighs> and my twins needed a moment to grieve. Yeah. And wow. I, I think that it's so funny because learning that and then going into this moment that we're facing in our country yeah it is it, it they're actually tied together and that's yeah. because for me one of the most important things that you can learn as a follower of Jesus is to yeah. be with those who mourn and my kids were mourning in the beginning of this. I was trying to skip past it and be like, but look at now we get to be home together. We get to do this and now we can do this. And they were like, can you give us a second? I miss my friend. That 
I miss my friends. Yeah. I, I, I was in my first ever school play and I was so excited oh. and it got canceled. Um, I was gonna get to finally do my dance recital and, and I had a solo in this and it got canceled. Um, yeah. I, I didn't get to do this field trip. Things that yeah. seem not important to us but are really important to a nine-year-old, you know? Yes. And that's trying to skip past it to just get to a solution. Yeah. Um, I was missing an opportunity for my own growth. And so sitting with my kid and letting them cry, letting them not even having an answer, just saying, what is hard for you? And letting them voice what is hard without wow. having to have an answer yeah. taught me so much as a mom. I had never done that with my girls. Well, guess yeah. what right now we need to do? We need to sit and listen yeah. to people and listen to what's been hard for them and not try to have an answer. Oh my God. We can work towards an answer, but in the moment, can yeah. we just take a moment and give the, those people an yeah. opportunity to just yeah. voice what they're grieved about and then yeah. take a moment and mourn with those who mourn. So that's been important for me that my daughters taught me that now I'm like, wait, I just learned that a few weeks ago and now I'm having an opportunity to actually live it out. And I feel like that is something all well, of and us can learn. Wow. All of us can learn. That everybody needs an opportunity to voice the grief. Everybody needs an opportunity to do that without feeling like yeah. they have to have somebody tell them what's next or what an answer is or what the question is. Would you just give me a moment? <laughs> just give yeah. me a moment to grieve. And I think that, that is, is important. It's profound because it's so interesting for those of us who wouldn't know that that's something that they taught you. I would say 10 to 12 weeks ago, we were all beneficiaries of that. Um, when we watched you decide to have a conversation and listen and grieve. And it's like, that's Holy Ghost. That gives me, <laughs> as Tiffany Thurston would say, that gives me chicken skin. <laughs> yes, love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you know, we're moms, so I know you have set aside this time for me. And I'm so grateful. And I'm not going to take all of your day because I know that there are people outside of that door waiting for you to come do something. One of them or, might be right under that door, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I love you so much. Oh, I am I so you. grateful for you. I love you. I am honored that you would speak with me. I am grateful for this season, allowing us to see each other's faces so close together. Because, you know, it's an industry where you love people and you understand that you just don't get to spend the time that you want. Yes. Everybody is busy. So I'm grateful to see your face. Oh, are you kidding? I'm so grateful to you. I'm just going to take one second and just speak something over you that I just felt so quickened from the Holy Spirit. And that is that sometimes we look at what God even gives us. Like sometimes I feel so ill-equipped to raise yeah. girls. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh. Like, remember when you're the one who had an eating disorder. How are you... Like you, you can't do this well, and I feel sometimes so ill-equipped to raise women in this, yeah. in this generation, in this culture. Yeah. But in the moments that you feel ill-equipped to raise men and to raise godly men of color, yeah. God gave those to you on purpose. I'm watching how you and EJ, even though it might be from afar, and how you're doing it, Janice, is so beautiful. It's so powerful. And what God is going to do, not just through your lives, but through your sons. See, this moment is actually going to define some things for you as parents that your kids aren't even going to fully remember, but they're going to be the beneficiaries of it. And now all of a sudden, we don't just need strong men. Guess what? In our culture, we need strong black men. We need strong black men. And the yeah. fact that God gave you an EJ, the way that he's put you together, the way that he's made your mind work, the way that you've studied, the world that you're in that is so fully integrated in your church life, in your work life, all of this, the fact when I sit back and I think that he gave you those sons, it's because you're raising up men of color who are going to go into the world and do it differently than it's been done before. And that's where the change is going to happen. That's where things are going to be broken. And I just, it's all, I can almost see with Holy Spirit eyes 
what he's going to do through those men that he's given you. And he has equipped you in the moments you feel weak, in the moments you feel like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? Yeah. He's equipped you in a way that he hasn't equipped anyone else. He's equipped you specifically to raise those beautiful, strong, full of grace, black men that are going to live for Jesus and change the world. Hallelujah. I receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You got me over here crying. You know how to put on my good lashes for this, Madden. <laughs> Girl, I'm doing those magnetic lashes, and the one thing I learned is you can't cry because the magnetic, they like, prong. <laughs> oh, so over here. <laughs> okay, then I need to ask you later on how to get those and how to put them on. Now, you can't cry, though, because yeah, I kind of cry, but I'm just, I feel like for shows, I'm still going to have to go back to the glue. Yeah. I can't cry, gosh, I love how we go from deep to not deep in a second. I know. Hey. Because I'm allergic to that glue, and it literally made my own eyelashes fill out, all that. But Thank I have you. to still leave the, the regular glue from the drugstore. I got to do that for the shows. Okay, well, I need you to help me because, first of all, you just spoke my testimony, and that is that blepharitis is real. Yes, I know the scientific nerd. Oh, yes, the girl. I got both eyes. And my lashes fell out. Exactly. Okay, so, I mean, I'm, I'm over here, you know, Charlie Brown in it. And so I be, <laughs> I be having to do, look, showing all my bees, knees. Yeah, yeah, it's happening. I'm telling you, so we need to talk about this because magnetic for the day, still a, a strip with glue for a show. Because nice. yeah. not cry, talk oh. about this. I, I always cry. Right now, if you just tell me, ma'am, Jesus, I'll be like, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, I love it. I, and I oh, love it. I love you. Super grateful for you. Oh, this has been so, so refreshing for me. So thank you for thank having you. me. And I love you. I oh, would love, you. love you. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>